Hey everyone, how's it going? I'm Nathan with the ebookreader.com. So I thought I'd do this separate video here as a PDF review with the Lightbook Muses because um, there's actually quite a bit to show. So uh, with the Lightbook Muses, it's got that 7.8 inch ink screen. So uh, it's not great for PDFs with the size, but I mean, it is usable at the 300 PPI ink screen and you got the Wacom pen so you can write notes directly on the PDF files. The uh, only thing is it's a little bit buggy. Like you can see right here, it overlaps the menus, which is kind of strange. Uh, every once in a while, I had a line not respond. Like it'll just like disappear too. Uh, but for the most part, it seems to work okay. You've got this different section over here that'll show you all your pages with your handwritten notes on it. If you hit the uh, button in the top corner there, it'll bring up the option to export uh, on Evernote. I mean, I don't have an Evernote account, so I haven't tried it. Uh, and then you have to have Wi-Fi connected, obviously, for it to work. Uh, so this is a large 90 megabyte PDF that I use on a lot of reviews just to test to see if the device can handle it or not. This one, it kind of bogs down. It keeps doing that caching window. So it has the uh, octa-core processor, two gigabytes of RAM. Clearly, I mean, the Kindle with one gigahertz processor and like half a gigabyte of RAM doesn't slow down. So it's just sort of one of those things. Some apps are more optimized than others. So you can also zoom in and write notes when you're fully zoomed out or when you're viewing the full page like this. So there are some limitations with uh, the handwriting feature. So you cannot write on the screen when you're using certain zoom levels. Let's go ahead and load up a different PDF here and I'll show you. So uh, there's some cool different like uh, zooming options that they added uh, a while back. I didn't used to have these when I reviewed the Lightbook Mars. So in here in the uh, font adjustment menu, you've got these different uh, zooming options right here. So you've also got the multi-column multi uh, option here. So if you want to set different quadrants on your screen, and then you can see right here, it shows which direction they go in. Uh, and then you can also fine tune exactly where you want the uh, page to break in half or, you know, your different uh, vertical and horizontal break sections on the page. Um, and then once you confirm that, you'll actually be able to just view the column and larger view here so you can easily read it and then it just goes down how you had it set up on that window with your uh, paging forward option. So uh, that definitely is a, a nice feature to have if you got the multi-column PDFs, uh, makes it handy. But uh, one problem with this is you can't write on the screen when you're zoomed in like this. Uh, you can only write on the screen like when you're fully zoomed out or if you're using like the manual crop mode. So some of these preset modes don't let you write on the screen. So some limitations there. Uh, even the fit to width, you would think you'd be able to write on the screen here, but it doesn't let you write on the screen. You have to have it. Uh, you can have the same zoom level set in like manual zoom, and then you can write the screen that way. So it's kind of weird with these limitations. So here's the fully zoomed out page. So that's the one where you can write on the screen. And then if you like do the pinch zooming, you can write on the screen as well. Uh, and then if you also, if you use like the auto crop or this manual crop so you can sort of set the region exactly how you want it uh, to cut on the screen so then yeah you can still write on the screen when you're using this mode for some reason it's kind of strange you can't with the fit the width option and the other zoom options all right so when it comes to the writing on the screen you got some different options than the note app which i showed in the uh, full review uh, you can check that out if you want so with the pdfs you've got the option to use the pressure sensitive pen or the non-pressure pressure sensitive pen. And then you have these uh, four different thicknesses, so you can't like customize it like you can in the Note app. And then you've also got white. If you're writing on some dark part of a PDF or something, you've got the white pen uh, to use as well. So uh, if you click over here on the uh, eraser section, uh, you got a couple of different options. It does the stroke erase, which is nice. I don't know why they don't have this in the Note app. So if you use the button, so the pen has this button on it, you can use the button to erase that way, or you can use the eraser on the end. Um, but the stroke erase, it'll erase the whole stroke, which is kind of nice. You don't have to sit there and manually erase the whole thing. Uh, and you can also erase all. Uh, so this is your export option. So when you open up the export menus, you can see here, you can export as PDF uh, to your computer, or I mean to the uh, device or to Evernote. Um, and you can just choose to do a single page if you want as well. And then the, there's the location right there. It's got a file manager you can find your notes that way. So this icon up here, just the front light. Oddly, there's no way to change the color from here. You can just adjust the uh, brightness. Um, and then in the top corner also, there's a search. So uh, the page forwarding is working a bit better with this particular PDF. It's not doing that caching thing like it was with that last uh, larger PDF. I mean, it'll do it sometimes. So um, another thing in here is you got this contrast adjustment. As you can see, like in the original mode, some of those images are too dark to see. Uh, so it's not really original. They're changing it, the contrast some, even on original here. Uh, but as you can see, you can change the darkness of the text and the images. You can also adjust it a little bit here. Uh, another thing they have is they have text reflow. They call it rearrange. 
Uh, so that'll reflow your PDF into like more of a uh, ebook type document where you can control the font size, but you can't write on the screen when you're using the mode like this. See, we're coming up against the caching again. So there are some limitations with using the stylus on PDFs. You can only use it in certain zoom modes. Uh, definitely is an advantage having that option, but again, I mean, you can't write on ebooks or anything like that, just PDFs. Uh, another thing you can do uh, to help with readability on PDFs is to switch it over to landscape mode. Uh, so that's nice and it uh, gives you a nice view of the page. It's easier to read. It's about as wide as a 10 inch uh, e-reader uh, in landscape mode, but you're only viewing half the page. Uh, so then you've also got the uh, table contents in here. I guess I didn't show it earlier. You've also got the nested uh, options here and that shows your bookmarks and your highlights and your notes, all everything in this section. Uh, the only problem with using landscape mode like this is that's using the fit to width option. So you can't write on the screen in that mode. Um, so, I mean, that's definitely a limitation. You got to zoom out to full screen mode. And then obviously that defeats the purpose of using landscape mode. So you can use the manual cropping option, but then in, when you page forward, it goes to the next page instead of down the page. So, I mean, it doesn't really work that well that way. Here's the settings menu where you can adjust the different page refresh frequency and you also have different tab zones. Uh, with PDFs, you probably need to use like full page refresh for about every page, maybe five at the most, because you can see in the background, the white image is some uh, ghosting. This device does have a bit more ghosting than the other devices I've re reviewed. Uh, just some about the way it refreshes. It doesn't always fully refresh the page as well as it could. Uh, so another thing when you're writing notes on the screen, as you can see, there's that dotted line there that represents the end of the page. So you can't go beyond that line at all. So one of the things you can do to uh, with this like particular PDF uh, is using the auto crop option. It'll get rid of the margins and kind of just fits it to the screen a little bit better than it does in the other mode. And you can still write on the screen when you're using the auto crop, which is nice. So, I mean, it's still readable in this mode, but uh, I mean, it just sort of depends on your eyesight. Uh, when it comes to selecting text, obviously you can't do it with the stylus because it'll just write on the screen, but you can use your finger to select text, but it doesn't work so well with PDFs as you can see. Instead of selecting the word, it only selects one letter. You can try to adjust little endpoints, but it's like too hard. I mean, they're just so tiny. It's hard to get an accurate grasp on them. Uh, I thought I'd try the wiki option at this point, um, and it opened some weird page in Chinese. I have absolutely no idea what's going on at this point, but uh, yeah, whatever. Um, so another thing you can do is you can use other apps. Since this device runs Android 6.0, you can load in other apps. Uh, CoReader is one option. If you wanted to use something else to read PDFs, uh, it, it has some advantages. I mean, it just depends on your apps, but um, this app, particular app, it's not refreshing the page as fully as it could. So it just sort of depends. It's one of those things with Android. You can try different apps. They may or may not work great, um, but it's not coming up against that caching wall at what the uh, regular app was coming up against. But I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this video right here. Check out the main review for more info. Uh, check out the ebookreader.com for the full review. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Bye.